What's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. I'm sorry for the introduction. I'm sorry for not having the memes prepared, but I have to go to work very, very early in the morning, and I only have so much time to dedicate to this. But I must talk about it because it did occur. Rock beat the ever-loving hell out of Cody Rhodes. And I got to say, that's what we needed throughout the whole road to WrestleMania. Not in splits, not in... Not in the manner of taking it slow, Devante. Don't you understand? It's WWE. They're telling a story at the moment. You have to take it slow. No, we're two weeks from WrestleMania. There's no taking it slow. Taking it slow is the beginning right after the Royal Rumble. That's taking it slow. When you're this close to WrestleMania, they should have started picking up the pace about three weeks ago, to be perfectly honest with you. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna hold them to that. I'm not going to hold them to that. I mean, I will, but at the same time, I'm not. Because this was a great segment. I seen Cody Rose getting ass, getting his ass beat, bleeding all over the place. And I, I do wish sometimes that, you know, it's, it's it's instances like this where AEW really does ruin everything because that blood actually has meaning. That blood actually has purpose. It's actually a key component in telling the story going into WrestleMania and knowing in the back of your mind that AEW, they're so goddamn outlaw that you kind of get that same kind like like you get that so much already in aew that it ruins it for the next company again look at my video earlier today when i talk about the you know the um the constant um uh, uh uh what would you say not pandering per se but coping i guess you will about aew still being the company as far as like how when you keep making so many bad fucking decisions check that video out. i did it earlier today but this was good though I, I'm not even going to front. This was very, very compelling. I liked it a lot. If you did more of this building up to the road of WrestleMania, that's how you would actually naturally gain some sympathy for Cody Rhodes. Not having some bullshit, um, uh, I wouldn't even say facade, but some bullshit campaign about trying to get him in the main event of WrestleMania. You don't even have to go down that route. If you just, that's what I mean all the time when I say to you guys, oh, shooting from the hip is so cliche, it's so passe, it's so boring. You get it so much that you really forget that it's professional wrestling. And the outlier professional wrestling, um, as far as the creativity goes nowadays, is so goddamn lost as an art. And like I say, you get it in, you know, you get it in uh, specifics or you get it in spigots, if you will. You get it in very short, piquito, chiquito, if you will. You know, you get them in breadcrumbs all the time as far as actual kayfabe good storylines. Again, you can go back to the bloodline story, right? But this is what I talk about all the time. You restrict yourself by trying to go the whole non kayfabe route, trying to shoot from the hip. Because we all understand that story is real. That's good. And there's nothing wrong with having a dose of realism within your professional wrestling. Nothing wrong with that at all. But it does get to a point sometimes when you keep getting fed dessert over and over and over and over and over again. That you will, even if you don't like like say the main course being steak or macaroni or anything like that as a kid you can eat as much ice cream as you want you will grow tired of it and you will want real food as a kid i'm saying the kid because kids love you know desserts and sweets and all that other kind of shit right so there is no necessarily me shitting on this at all there is no me necessarily going out of my way to say that this wasn't a bad segment kind of reiterating the earlier point my only contention to all of this is the fact that they didn't do all this to begin with. You know, you're going at, you know, 10 miles per hour. And like I said, I can hold them in contempt as far as the build to WrestleMania overall. And at the same time, recognize tonight was good. Now, the question is, and I think another, I guess you could say concern. I guess it depends how you look at it. If you really care that deeply about it. Is does this take the thunder away more from Roman Reigns? Because you can argue, yeah, the energy that the Rock has being in the bloodline is going to, you know, circumvent itself to Roman Reigns. But it still wasn't Roman to be the one to, you know, incite this. It wasn't Roman Reigns to be the one to go out of his way to commit this. You know, you had Roman Reigns looking like a fucking geek on SmackDown being the world champion. And you have Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa by his side. And all it took was The Rock to do this by himself. See, that, see, that's another problem. That's another problem that I guess you have to address sooner or later. One can argue this was a great segment, but maybe it should have been Roman Reigns initiating this and destroying Cody Rhodes. And maybe you can have Rock in the background cheerleading Cody Rhodes or cheerleading Roman Reigns. Or maybe Rock could have got involved. And then Seth Rollins could have chased them off and then you went to a logo. Instead, it's Rock once again taking the thunder from everybody and i fuck with the rock he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time i grew up on him i love the rock 
And I'm not really that big of a fan of Cody Rhodes. I think he's boring. But it's not to say the fact that objectively, maybe it would have made more sense to have, you know, Roman play this role. I mean, people are going to probably, well, Devontae, he can only make limited appearances. Well, okay, see, and, and that's my main point when I say you should take the belt off for Roman Reigns, even if it is someone like Cody Rose. If it really is his contract that's holding him back from showing up tonight to be the key component that should have been the one to do all this to Cody Rose, to build up sympathy for Cody Rose even more and more of a detestability for a Roman Reigns going into WrestleMania, if his contract is really holding him back because he can't make the dates because those dates in his contract doesn't really allow him to do it even though i call it bullshit i still think if he really really wanted to he could have done it but i get it in the end of the day if you don't have to why but it's situations like that that really say to you like yeah you got to get the belt off for roman if that's really the concern if that's really the situation then yeah you got to get the belt off for roman like dude can't even be bothered to be in a position where he can get himself more over because this is beyond the third world you know, at least back at WrestleMania 14 with Austin and Mike Tyson and, you know, Sean was the champion playing the third wheel. At least he was there every week. At least he had D-Generation X on his side. At least his excuse was he had a fucked up back and he can't really do as much as he would like to do in the storyline compared to Roman Reigns. Only thing broken on him for the most part apparently is his mentality. His pride? I don't know. As far as why he won't fucking show up to half of these shows, what I know for a fact, even if it's written in his contract, I know he himself could break his own contract in order to come and show up and do some of these key components that you need in order to build the WrestleMania. And like I said, I get it in the end of the day. If you can't, or better yet, if you're in a position where you don't have to show up to work, I don't know a motherfucker alive who wouldn't take that and then run with it. But at the same time, though, there are consequences to this and you are being hurt by those consequences, Roman. I'm talking as if he's actually listening, but... I mean, I'm hoping, I'm praying. I don't think I'm seeing anything that no one backstage is already keyed on. Because now we're going into WrestleMania and it kind of feels like the tag team match on night one is going to be a hell of a lot more important than the main event going into night two. Even if Rock plays of, and again, because you know, again, it goes right back to the fact that Rock is going to play a key, he's going to be a key figure in WrestleMania, right? Whether it's a tag team match, whether it's the main event. <sighs> it's just one of those situations again, because also, and you guys can correct me. You guys can be like, oh, Devonta, you're maybe grasping that straws a little bit. But am I really if I say something like this? With Roman Reigns being not there to do the stuff to Cody Rhodes that Rock did to him, that should have been his position. That should have been him doing all that stuff. Don't you think to a lesser degree it kind of hurts Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins by virtue? Only because it's kind of reiterating the same point of the attitude era superstar is going to be the one to do the cool angles versus the guys from this era. They're too pussy to do what Rock can do. I mean, it took Roman Reigns and two of his cousins to literally show up on SmackDown and not do a goddamn thing. And all Rock had to do was just go beat the fuck out of Cody Rhodes by himself backstage. You know, sublim subliminally. Is that right? Subliminally? Subliminally. Subliminally. God damn, I can't say that. Say that 10 times fast. It, it just makes it look like Roman is that much more of, you know, of a little bro type. You know, damn, bro, you and your cousins can get the job done. Then let me do it by myself then. You know, it's just funny. I kept complaining and bitching and moaning about angles and all this stuff. And I'm cool with it. But they still somehow find a way to a lesser degree to kind of make it feel like it's not as significant as it could be. You get what I'm saying? Because I know people are going to probably be like, damn, Devontae, make up your mind. Damn, Devontae, you ain't staying consistent. Damn, Devontae, they gave you what you want. You say you wanted more backstage stuff. All right, facts, cool. Like, but it still should have been Roman to have taken place and done all this with The Rock still being there. And like I said, Seth could have chased them off and that could have been what actually went off the air. And that would have been a hell of a lot more compelling because it's Roman Reigns. And not to mention, it makes them look a little bit more on Rock's level. Now the Rock has now pushed himself a little bit more past the level, right? He made Cody look like a geek. He made Roman look like a geek because, hey, you're not even here to fucking do the job correctly. It took you and two of your cousins. You still didn't get the job done, kayfabe-wise. And then Seth Rollins didn't even come out to go save him. They just went off the air like that. So like I said, there are multiple ways you can look at this, and there are multiple ways you can accept this but in the end of the day though you got to use common sense and you got to think for yourself without trying to take things out of context 
you can look at this and you can see that it was a great segment. But at the same time, you also have to recognize that there are some variables that they could have done a hell of a lot better while still saying this was one hell of a segment. You feel me? You want to see where I'm coming from? If not, I don't know what to tell you. Fuck you. I don't know. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Did I say anything out of, you know, pocket besides fuck you? Because I mean that. Fuck you. Did I say anything in regards to the topic today, to the subject today that makes you say to yourself, damn, Devontae, like, bruh. I don't think what you're saying right now makes any sense. Am I not saying anything that doesn't make any sense? Let me reiterate my points one more time, really quick. Just T L D R, whatever. Too long didn't read. Roman is a bitch for not being there and taking care of business as the world champion. Cody is a bitch because, well, he got his ass kicked. And Seth is a bitch for not going in there and saving Cody. Even though he's been talking for weeks about being that guy to go out there and go help him out. I seen something earlier. Did he get taken up by Drew McIntyre? If he did, then I'll take back that. Even though, like, did he take him out or him for Claymore kicking? That's if he actually did do something to Drew. Because I heard Punk was supposed to be on commentary for WrestleMania. If he did, okay, cool. But even then, I don't buy it because it's just a Claymore kick. It's a finisher. He still could have came out there and helped out Cody Rhodes. And if he didn't take anything at all, then that just makes it a hell of a lot worse. I don't know, man. I liked it. Got to say it one more time. I liked it a lot. I just wish common sense would prevail when it comes to the booking of some of these stories and some of these matches. You feel me? Right? It's like the whole Friday's meme. Peanut butter, no jelly, ham, no burger, bread, no head. And I mean that like sexually. If you Got the, let me get the fuck up out of here. I got to go to work in the morning time. As always, my name is Devontae, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces. P. Eyes.